welcome to the last 8.15 Live Lounge. Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? It feels like just yesterday that we were starting all this. I know, and now honestly. we're nearly done. I know, we used to arrive and it was dark. And now I think I arrived and it was still light. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know, that's how long it's been since we've uh, been doing this. It's very exciting. How are you doing? How's your week been? Wow, yeah. Um, that means I've got to think about my week. Yes, I think it's been good. Um, what's happened? I spent, I feel like I update you on this every week, guys. You're coming on my skating journey with me. Um, nice. I've been down the skate park a lot, um, which has been really great. Got outside, plodded on with work. Yeah, it's been all right, I think. Ate some good food. Happy days. Yeah, I had fish and chips for dinner last night. We should probably say for yet. people that don't yet know us, if you're not oh, yes. watching the previous Hi, ones. Yes, sorry, I'm Ellie. I'm the youth pastor all days, and this is Tom. Thank Hello. You. How's nice your week been? Do you know what? It's been it's been all right. It definitely feels like that kind of end of term feeling of like sure. just slightly running out of energy. But you know, God has been really good and yeah, excited. I mean, lots of exciting things kind of coming up over the next next few weeks. But we'll talk a bit more about that a little Great. bit later. Yeah, very exciting. Tonight we are thinking about justice in a we little are. while. But first, we're going to worship, and as with every other week, we're going to start with a, a time of confession. So, yeah. And confession, just a, a kind of complicated word for saying sorry to God. And yeah. yeah. Would you lead us in that? Love to. Mate. Great. Father God, we come to you now, and we just still ourselves before you. We put to one side all that has happened this past week. We offer it to you and we, we say sorry, Lord, for the ways that we've walked in the opposite direction from you when we have neglected you in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you are always there with open arms, ready to receive us. And so, Lord, would you do that now as we come to you? Would you receive us, Lord? We thank you that you are with us here and we pray, Lord, as we enter this time of worship that we would draw near to you or we would know you close with us during this time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I sing for all that you've done for me. 
sing the Lord is our deliverer and his love will never fade.
Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here now. And we welcome you into the home of everybody who's uh, watching tonight. Father, we thank you for the amazing gift of the cross. We thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made to make us right with the Father. Holy Spirit, would you just renew uh, the truth and the beauty and the magnificence of that to us again tonight? That we didn't get and don't get what we deserve because you paid the price for us. What an incredible thing. God of justice, we thank you. Amen. 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 Well, Paddy, thank you. That was awesome. Tonight, we're about to talk about justice, but first, we want to just quickly tell you about a couple of things that are coming up in the life of the church in the next uh, couple of weeks. So sadly, tonight is the last episode of the 815 Live Lounge. We have loved doing this. It's been, been so much fun. Yeah. Um, it's been really fun to just hang out with you guys. I it's know. Been, it's been great. It's been great. Um, so nice. But exciting news. Next week, we are coming back live uh, in the church. Already lots of stuff is going on in order to make that happen. Um, to come to either the 1030 or the 6, you'll need to get a ticket. You need to book a place. You can do that on the website, um, but the 10.30 will still be broadcast live. So that's for the next two weeks. And then the week after that, 11th of April, uh, Stephen Foster, who's the new senior leader, the rector, we call it, of this church, uh, he's going to be uh, commissioned that Sunday morning. So uh, those, that's just going to be an online service. Really encourage you to be there. It's a really significant moment in the life of our church. Yeah. We really want to welcome Stephen and Beth and their children to our church and to pray for them. And we'd really encourage you, particularly in the next couple of weeks, to be praying for Stephen and Beth as they and their family move and as they get ready to, as Stephen particularly gets ready to take on the, the leadership of this church. We really want to bless him. So I really encourage you to be there and be praying for him on the 11th. And then we're really hoping that on the 18th of April, we're going to come back for the 8.15 in person. We need to take a little bit more time to just work, out, work that out and pray about it. But we're really hopeful that um, from that date, we will be able to be back here uh, for a 10-week term, which is amazing. <laughs> so, exciting. so exciting. And again, you'll need to book your tickets for that. If you need to find out anything about what's going on, uh, about booking tickets, anything like that, Two ways to do it, either go to our website or follow us on Instagram. That's the other place where you can find, and all the links for all the stuff's on Instagram as well. So that's a great place to go. But all that being said... Information done. Information well done. done. That Thank was a you. lot to get through. Well Thank done. Thank you, mate. Well I appreciate done, it. <laughs> we try and be efficient with information here. Um, justice. Yeah. We really, we sort of kind of asked you guys to get in touch with us about what it was that you might want us to talk about this week. And the thing that's kept coming actually over the kind of the course of the weeks that we've been mm. doing is, is justice, um, that people want to hear a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. So. So it's our job to talk about <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Tell us what's justice, Ellie. Yeah. Um, a great definition um, for justice that I've been trying to think a little bit about is um, basically to make something right, I guess. Um, if an injustice is kind of happening, if, if something is unjust, um, it needs to be made right. If there's something that's gone wrong, we need to make it right again. Um, and so 
yeah, to think of justice, it's to think of this idea of making something right again. Um, I think it's probably the easiest explanation that we can give as like yeah. a starting point to move forwards from. Absolutely. Um, and we've just been yeah. singing, haven't we, about the fact that one day God is going to make all things new. Yeah. But that, that is, he's already doing that. He's already, mm -hmm. at, you know, Jesus taught when he, he first kind of spoke in his ministry about um, coming to free the oppressed, to bring justice. Mm. Um, but it's also something that we're called to be a part of yeah. as the church. Um, I know you've got a particular verse that you were, you were wanting to bring as, as a way of starting that conversation off. Yes, I do. Um, I don't, shall I read it now? Yeah, Let's read it now. I think so. Um, so if you've got a Bible, please um, open it with us and uh, read. So this is from Micah chapter 6, verse 8, and it says this. Um, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, keyword, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amazing. It's a requirement. Yeah. So it's, this isn't an added extra, it's not like we had an extra week, what we're going to do with it. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I've been really confronted with the fact that justice is, it's an absolute part of what it means to yeah. be a follower of Jesus. It's not, it's not optional. But it's been really interesting recently, I think, Culture's really picked. I mean, you were telling me something about <laughs> Justin Bieber, of all people. I know. Um, so I was talking to a friend about Justin Bieber because he's got a new album out. Um, if you're a Justin Bieber fan, you would know that already. I thought you were about to say um, that you'd spoken to Justin Bieber. That would have been amazing. If I had, that would have been great. That, but you didn't. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> and we all love a bit of Justin Bieber, don't we? Yeah. I mean, he's brought out some classic songs okay, for us to yeah. enjoy. So anyway, Justin Bieber aside, in one sense. Um, so he's just brought out a new album, and the album is called Justice. Um, which I thought was very interesting, yeah. like thinking about this this week and that that's the name of the album. And so a little bit of Googling to figure out why has he called it Justice, because there's no song on the album actually called Justice. And um, he has created this album off the back of what has kind of gone on in the last year in so many different ways. Mm. And so he wanted to write an album that I think helped people kind of process what they've experienced and what they've seen yeah. maybe in the news. Um, and maybe just speak into that a little bit. Maybe it's partly him um, processing stuff as well, but I just think it's really interesting that something very current, people are talking about justice in so many different ways, that someone's created an album yeah. like titled Justice. It's massive, isn't it? It's yeah. been, I think it's been a really confronting year. I mean, obviously we've had the, the kind of COVID pandemic to yeah. deal with, but then there's also been all the stuff about Black Lives Matter, yeah. racial inequality, racial injustice. And we've got an amazing um, team at this church who are uh, seeking to kind of help provide information, help us to have that kind of conversation yeah. about how as a church can we start to um, both sort of deal with the issues in our, in our own church, but also to, to be speaking to culture. Um, but then as well, I've been really confronted by everything that's uh, obviously the, the death of Sarah Everard, but yeah. also the um that, um that stat of like 97 percent of women in the uk uh say that they've been sexually assaulted that's just yeah. in some ways sadly it doesn't surprise me in other ways it just completely confronts me as like that's not okay and i think yeah. that for me is a is that's what justice is in a way it's it's that feeling of oh no th th that can't be right this, yeah that that's not okay that's not I think it's something almost innate within us that we have this sense of, no, that, that, that's not right. Mm. And yet there's other injustices that we're not even yeah. aware of. And we'll, we'll talk about some of those um, a little bit later, maybe. Yeah, I mean, the fact that that passage says it's a requirement for us to act yeah. justly, God has clearly put it within us. I think that we should be seeking justice for situations and for maybe for people who don't have a voice. Yeah, um, absolutely. For us to be able to stand in the gap and do what we can. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And it, I think as well, we've been talking about obviously lots of other things over the last six weeks, including worship and prayer and the Bible. Mm. Um, but there's a, an amazing verse about um, a couple of verses in Amos 5. Um, about justice, where it talks about the relationship between justice and worship. So this is God speaking through the prophet Amos. 
uh, to the Israelite people who've turned away from God. They've, they're not following his laws. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It says, um, so it's Amos 5.21, I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. And then just skipping down to verse 23, take away from me the noise of your songs to the melody of your instruments. I will not listen, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. What a beautiful image. I know, it's extraordinary, but it's also really confronting, I think. Yeah. Particularly, you know, we're in the business of like making church happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and th- that verse is essentially saying, you know, I'm not going to listen to your worship. Your worship has no value to me if you're not involved in the work of justice. Yeah. If you're not... And that starts with us, right? That starts with our... Because I think the temptation when we think about justice is to look at first, perhaps, to, like, jump to the big issues that are yeah. around us and to kind of... Or it can also be to think, OK, how, am I, how have I been treated unjustly? Yeah. Um, but the, the parables, I mean... The parables Jesus taught through kind of parables, just like stories, kind of ways in which Jesus explained to his followers what it was that he was trying to say. And there's one where he talks about, um, look, you know, before you talk about the speck of dust in your brother's eye, <laughs> take, the, take the massive log Plank out of out your own. own. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of parables like that where he, he talks about, okay, deal with your stuff first yeah. and then look at what other people... Are doing and I know that for you like you've been pursuing this as like a, or elements of this as like mm. a personal thing yeah um, tell us a bit about that yeah I mean I, I guess th- going back to that that feeling you have when you see something that is wrong I don't know there's almost this gut sense maybe I, I think the Holy Spirit can kind of prompt us in that as well and and wake us up to stuff yeah. and I have a real thing about people in terms of not the idea that I am contributing to um, someone's life in a negative way in that. Um, so for me, I made a decision like a year and a bit ago that I wasn't going to buy clothes um, brand new unless I knew exactly kind of the chain that's kind of made up who's made them, um, that there's fair wages in, involved in being the making of the clothes. So I buy a lot of stuff secondhand, so I'm not supporting those um, companies um, and then supporting the ones that are making things better for people. Um, Because I just feel really strongly that someone shouldn't have to suffer because I want another item of clothing. Like, it's just a really simple thing that just doesn't sit right with me. My gut doesn't feel right in that. My spirit doesn't feel right. And so that's the decision that I made, that I, um, yeah, don't buy stuff from brands that I don't agree with their ethics on. Wow. Um, So, yeah, and... uh, it, as you've just said, it doesn't have to be, what can I do? There's a big issue. How can I go and do something right away? If you do have that feeling, go and do it. Please do. Be moved in it. But yeah. I think we can start small and we can ask God to just open our eyes to what is around us, yeah. um, to the bigger issues, but to the smaller injustices that we are going on around us, in Oxford even, in our friends' lives, in, in yeah. things that we can make a difference in, and asking God to kind of break our heart for what breaks his, to yeah. have God's eyes in these things. Absolutely, and that's, that's something, like you say, the Holy Spirit does. He yeah. can open our eyes to the injustices that we're kind of a part of, that we're, yeah. we're involved in. I'm trying to think where we go next. It's... I mean, I think coming back to this verse that I like read out initially from Micah, I think mm. God is is in the the doing of He cares about our character, He cares about our heart position, yeah. and so I think we need to sit with God as our witness. Yeah. <laughs> if actually He is the one that we're living for, it's it's not really about other people in, in as such as what they think about us, um, but how are we doing stuff um, in our lives that reflects God and reflects his kingdom? Um, And this verse um, talks us to walk humbly with your God. And I think when we're doing it, if you almost do it in reverse, it's like when we're walking with the Lord, he can bring our attention to these things Mm. that we need to see. And so what we've been looking at for all of these weeks, I think, brings us back to this, doesn't it? We're constantly trying to think, how can I respond to the gift of love that God has yeah. given me when he died on the cross for me and I've accepted 
that accepted Jesus, actually, how am I going to live that out and reflect him back in what I do? And I think justice is something that is on God's heart and should be on our heart if that's Absolutely. what it's about. And we don't want this just to be a, a head thing. It's got to be yeah. involved in actually what we're doing yeah. with, with our lives. And you can give financially yeah. to organisations that you support or you can educate yourself to know where you're buying something from or yeah. you can give your time and energy to support a charity practically or um, there's loads of things that you can do but just start and do something is what I would say. <laughs> so I think that's going to be, we're going to keep this, this conversation relatively short yeah. tonight um, and that is, that's our challenge isn't it right, is to, yeah. to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to know what, to actually take some time. And maybe we'll do that for a, a, couple of, a couple of moments in a second, but to take some time to ask God, okay, God, open my eyes to the injustices around me. And it could be that you need to make, off the back of that, practical changes mm. in your life, like you're talking about with, um, with clothing. It could be um, food that you buy. It could be uh, to do with... Uh, stuff you consume online it could be mm. any any of these things yeah um but it could also be getting behind a, a wider issue yeah um so yeah why don't we should we do that now for a moment yeah. or two? okay great wait on the lord yeah do you want to lead us yeah amazing gladly yeah why don't uh, maybe you want to put your hands out as just a sign of saying god come and speak to me um Holy Spirit, we just want to open ourselves to you. You speak to us today, and um, I pray, Lord, would you come and speak to us now? Would you open our eyes to see what's going on around us? Whether it's us scrolling through Instagram and seeing something um, that someone else has posted and we kind of want to go off that, Lord, would you kind of use that as a little root to, to grow something in us? We are your church. We are here as your servants, ready to do your will and to advance your kingdom, God. And um, you are a God who cares about people primarily. And Lord, we just ask, would you use us? Help us to fight injustice. Would we be known as people who seek to make things right? Yeah. Lord, we, we ask, our, our big prayer is to help us to, uh, to see things as you see them mm -hmm. and to be moved into action. And as we head into a time of worship now, Lord, would you just continue the work that you're doing in us? Mm. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us, reveal new things to us? Yeah. And if maybe you're not kind of getting any sense of anything right now, that's absolutely fine. Um, keep praying into this stuff yeah. this coming week. But Lord, Jesus. we just open ourselves up to you right now. Jesus. Would you have your way with us, we pray. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, we look to you. And Father, we want to say sorry for the injustices that we are knowingly involved in. Father, if you've opened our eyes tonight to things that we need to, to fix in our own lives, then Father, give us the, the courage, give us the strength to do that. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, Lord. Yeah. We want to worship you with the whole of our lives. You had one final thought for us, Ellie. Yeah, I just, I think 
this whole term has been beautiful, and I think is, this is our final one for, yeah. for a while. Um, I just want us to be re reminded of how loved we are and um, that we are all God's children. And when we're thinking of matters of injustice, mm. we're working for the good of someone else, and God sees them as his child and he cares about them. And so we should care about them too. And I just feel a real strong sense of that. And maybe let that be your motivator as you um, kind of pursue justice, that you're responding to the love that God's given you and how can you give that out again? So that's just my final little thought. That's really good. I mean, one of the, we asked for your questions last week and one of the questions that came in was from Andre, who's an A15 team member, absolute legend. He was saying, how do we, how do we stay on track? How do we, because culture's saying a lot about justice mm. and the Bible talks about you know, it. How as Christians do we stay on track with, with what God is doing? And I think it's that thing of keeping our eyes fixed on him, like you say, yeah. and remembering that that's the reason that we're involved in this mm. and uh, keeping, keeping it with the Bible as well and what yeah. does the Bible say about justice? But it all comes from, it's all an act of worship to God. It all comes out of that place first rather than anything else. Um, but that is it for this 815 Live Lab series. It. Seven oh. weeks. It's been so much fun. We've really enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for coming on the adventure with us. Yeah. It's been really, really good. And we're really, really excited to be back here live and in the building. We would love for you to join us. Even if you don't normally come to the 815, uh, last time we did live services, the uh, both the, the other services were fully booked. So we'd really encourage you to come down to the 815. If you find you can't get a ticket on a week, you, we just want you to feel really, really, really welcome mm. here. Regardless of how old you are or anything like that, um, we really want to welcome you. A couple of other things we want to do before we finish tonight. Firstly, we want to say a massive, massive thank you to the amazing team. You can't see behind the camera, um, but there are a couple of really key people uh, in the building who've uh, been helping us. Our production team have been absolutely amazing. Our worship team as well. But in particular, uh, Mr. James Muscat, who is our production manager, has been working absolutely tirelessly. He's also been really key to the vision for this and making it happen. So yeah. James up in the gallery, really want to say a massive thank you to you. And Evie, who's our communications manager as well, who's been a complete legend in putting together all the graphics that you see and all that kind of stuff. These guys have worked so, so hard on this project, and we really want to thank them. The other thing we want to say, we, we've not talked about this in the other weeks, but um, it has cost a certain amount of money to get this together. Um, we've, had to, we've tried to be, do everything sustainably, so all the things we've bought are things that we can use for future projects, but it, it has cost a bit of money to get this thing going. Um, so if this has blessed you, if this is something that um, has helped you over the last, uh, last two months, we would really encourage you to, to give towards the work of St. Aldates. Uh, you can do that via the information that was going to come up on the screen just now, but it's St. Aldates to Aldate Clay uh, forward slash give. Um, we really encourage you to do that. We appreciate that it's a time where finances are tight for people, but maybe ask God whether he might be calling you to give to, to this project, um, but also to the work of St. Aldates as a whole. And St. Aldates is involved in lots of projects that are involved with justice, and we also give 10% of uh, what we are given away to other projects as well, um, and the mission of the church worldwide. So, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. It's been such an amazing time. We've been, we've been really blessed by this, actually. It's yeah, been really fun for us. it's been a, a real us. joy to come and yeah. share with you each week, so thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Be blessed. And have a wonderful Easter. Yeah, have an amazing Easter. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See ya.